Now today's subject is quite a complex one, so I'm going to make the assumption that you've already watched our earlier video about Microsoft um, counters and using PowerShell to collect the information. And if you haven't, please go back and watch that video. There will be a link in the description. Now, assuming that you have watched that, we're going to show you how to progress that information to the next logical level. So in our case, that means using InfluxDB to capture data. But in order to do that, we can either use Invoke Web or we can use the Influx module. So in this case, we're going to use the Influx module. And I'm going to show you that depending on whether or not you launch the PowerShell as an administrator, as to whether you get an error message or not. Moving right along, um, here's one that I've created earlier, as they used to say in Blue Peter. This is a collection of performance counters and rounding as described in earlier videos, so we're not going to cover that part. What we are going to go through is simply the write influx, where we tell it to write to the influx DB, and that's based on a URL. Now, you can see we got an error there. Now, the reason for this is because I haven't actually started my influx collection yet. So in this case, we're going to start the influx DB and the related dashboards by starting up our Docker container. So if I run this again, we can now see that we get successful posts. So the data is now flowing to the influx DB. Now I'm going to remove the robust logging and we'll go into the more of the detail. So what we effectively have is a tick stack, as it's referred to. So this is the collection of individual software programs that overall make up a monitoring and collection and reporting uh, infrastructure. So in this case, this is the tick stack. Now, for me personally, I'm okay with this, but I didn't want to use Telegraph to record stuff because I didn't want to put another layer of things on top of a machine unless I needed to. And since I didn't need to, I decided to replace a couple of the elements. So as an example, my stack is made up with PowerShell doing the collection and Grafana doing the dashboarding because I happen to be familiar with Grafana anyway. Now the argument could be made, why not just install Telegraph and say, you know, done. Uh, in my case, because why install something if you don't need to, would be my argument. And I already have PowerShell on Windows machines. So there's no need for me to install an additional program. Now, in our case, we're going to go over to the Grafana now. So Grafana, in this case, has already been pre-configured with a data source. So I can simply get the information straight out of the InfluxDB. Now, some of you are probably thinking, hey, why use InfluxDB? Why not use Oracle or SQL? I have those perfectly readily available. And you go, well... Honestly, InfluxDB is a time series database, and frankly, it does that brilliantly. So that's why we're using it. Now, I've collected the information in Grafana under server. So in this case, I want to give a tag that is a production tag. So if I change my input of my earlier collection just with the tag prod instead, and go back to my Grafana dashboard and show that I do the collection from prod. I can then simply show my information in the dashboard from this server. Now I could use not equals to or equals to in order to pick out an individual server, or I can just use not equals to and get the whole environment. And as you can see already, we start to see that my dashboard is coming together as I have data in it. So we're going to kind of start to go through the stages of measuring the CPU and RAM as I go ahead and create these dashboards. And as I do so, you'll see how relatively quick and easy it is to create dashboards, both in Grafana and with time series information coming from InfluxDB. So where you've got a large organization, which is what I originally looked at for this, replacing what is a three and a half million dollar monitoring solution with effectively open source software, you start to see where the cost savings and even the reasons for doing this are. Now, the other great thing about InfluxDB compared with some other things like Oracle or SQL, is you don't need to schedule jobs in order to clean up data you can actually set the retention policy when you create the DB. 
So after a little tinkering, you can see we've created some basic alerting on our dashboard, not just the memory and CPU, but also values to alert on. So in this case, if the memory drops below a certain percentage, it turns red. And in this case, now we want to, let's say, expose the dashboard for more users now that development is over. So in this case, I just simply expose the port. In your case, that might be exposing the Docker image. Um, and then you can go ahead and allow other users. You can create more logins so that they can authenticate. And then they can simply go to the dashboard and see the data that is available. Now you can restrict this by users or you can increase the number of users. It's entirely down to you. Now hopefully you found this video useful. If you did, give us a thumbs up. If you didn't, you know what to do. And as always, subscribe for more content.